any definition of emotional accounting, uh, it's really best if you understand what mental accounting is. Um, so mental accounting is, uh, is a concept that's about 20 years old, and uh, it comes out of the research in behavioral economics. Um, so economists tend to think about money as fungible, which is just a fancy way to say interchangeable. And that is that a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. It doesn't matter where you get it, where it is, how you think about it. The value of a dollar is the value of a dollar. And behavioral economists, um, Richard Thaler in particular, recognize that people don't think of their money in that way. Uh, that they tend to track um, and coordinate their financial activities using a series of cognitive labels or what, what he calls mental accounts. And uh, so if you ask people, you know, how much money do you have? They don't give you some big number. Um, they know how much money they have in their wallet, how much money they have in their savings account, uh, how much they have in their checking account, in their 401k, in their children's college savings accounts, and so on. And what's interesting about that is that, that each of those accounts has a different label and as a consequence has a different set of rules about how that money should be spent. So money in your wallet is meant to be spent. Money in your children's savings account is not. And to go and purchase a vacation with it is not right. Um, and even to use it to buy groceries is not right. It's really painful for people to do that. And what's interesting about mental accounting and what Jonathan and I recognized was that it's a very cold cognitive theory. It, it, it basically says that people treat these things in a very cognitive way. But anybody who thinks about money, any, anybody who knows anything about money knows how emotional it is, knows that there's a lot of feelings that go along with it. And so we started to look into this idea of emotional accounting. So emotional accounting basically says that people's feelings about a sum of money, in particular we look at how their negative feelings about a sum of money, influences how that money is spent. Um, and we decided to look at negative feelings. One is because it's counterintuitive, uh, that most people don't think about the receipt of money as a negative thing. But in the case of like an inheritance, for instance, um, or a situation where you may feel guilty about receiving a sum of money. So you and I are, uh, receive a bonus. We done, we've done an equal amount of work, but I get more money than you do. I may have some mixed feelings, some negative feelings associated with it, and do those negative feelings affect how I spend it. We used a particular area, a particular domain to investigate, and that is the area um, research on windfalls. So windfalls are unexpected sources of money. And, uh, you know, an, a windfall of money, you imagine winning the lottery would be a windfall of cash. Um, and mental accounting has a very clear prediction about windfalls, and that is that because uh, they're unexpected, they don't have a mental account. They don't have a tag associated with it like normal income that you get from your job does. And so that, that money ends up in sort of a pocket money account and sort of in your wallet and money in your wallet is meant to be spent and that's what tends to happen with windfalls. People tend to spend them more readily and frivolously than, than other types of income. And they also tend to be really positive things, right? Getting free money is great. It's wonderful. Um, and so what we did was contrast those situations with, uh, with situations where people had mixed feelings about it, like an inheritance, let's say, or like a bonus that you felt like maybe you didn't quite deserve. And what we found was that in, uh, instead of people spending this money on hedonic things, on pleasurable things like vacations and ice cream and fancy dinners and so on, they tend to avoid those kinds of purchases because those kind of purchases can induce more guilt. And instead, they, they tend to what we call launder the money. They tend to, to use it for virtuous things, donations or charitable giving, or they use it for kind of utilitarian purchase, per, um, purposes, like they'll use the money for educational expenses. And the idea that, that we surmised and, and found was that that helps sort of cleanse the, the money from these, ne the, excuse me, they tend to cleanse the, their negative feelings that they have about the money, because after all, they're using it for good things. I, I mean, I think that the thing that was surprising was the initial study we did. We did an initial pilot, pilot survey in which we just asked people, can you feel both good and bad about a sum of money and, and tell us uh, 
tell us has that happened to you and, and what was the circumstance? And I was, well, I was blown away by thus the number of people who said, sure, you know, that, that really goes against um, a lot of ideas in economics, uh, you know, that money is a good thing. You know, people, uh, you know, people work very hard for it, they value it a lot, and the idea that they might have some negative feelings about it. And, and then just the, the wide variety of, of circumstances that people discussed, um, you know, receiving bonuses that they felt like they didn't, they didn't deserve, money given to them by family members that they didn't necessarily like, or ones that they liked a lot, um, but were sick or, you know, had, had passed away. Um, they were really quite compelling.